the beginning, they were mostly Irish immigrants who had nowhere else to go. So they came here to a place called Notre Dame du Lac. Today, from all 50 states and just about everywhere else in the world, they come by choice to a place where anything is possible, where spirit is hard to define. But impossible to ignore. Hey, Enrique. How are you doing? How's your wonderful daughter? Thank you. Great. She's doing great. 1842, in the cold, forbidding wilderness of the New World, seven missionaries brothers of St. Joseph and a French priest named Sorin dreamed about building the greatest Catholic university in the world and dedicating it all to Mary, Mother of God. But they'd chosen a harsh place in the middle of nowhere for their humble beginnings. Disease, strife, and even fire would constantly challenge them. In time, they would place a statue of Mary on a dome so that everyone would know who watched over this place, a place with such destiny. When the dome burned to the ground, there were those who were prepared to give up. But it was rebuilt by volunteers, including the people of South Bend, inspired by the spirit within this place. No one gave up. No one would quit. When a Detroit newspaper dubbed the football team the Fighting Irish, was meant as an insult to Irishmen and especially Irish Catholics. But the boys took their nickname proudly. They weren't supposed to be good, but they were more than good. They were magical. So a legend was born. When the Grotto of Our Lady of Lords was replicated on campus so that thousands of men and women could come and pray, a place in the heart was made. And when students confronted and stood down the Ku Klux Klan, it seemed as if an appointment with destiny had been met. Whatever being Irish meant prior to the boys embracing their taunt of a nickname, it was pretty clear that it now stood for something more universal, for everyone and anyone who'd ever felt like an underdog in this country. And so a nation adopted the little school from the middle of nowhere. You can say it was for football, but a lot more was happening behind these ivy-covered walls. It was here, in this building, that synthetic rubber was invented. The first radio signal in America was broadcast from this steeple. It's here where the world's largest collegiate library building was built in the early 60s, where a world-renowned institute for peace would someday be built, a place where the oldest Catholic law school and the oldest Catholic engineering school in the country could be found. And where a long time ago, a priest named Corby, who would someday become president of Notre Dame, served first as chaplain for and blessed the Irish Brigade in the Civil War prior to the Battle of Gettysburg. Where Notre Dame men and women like Tom Dooley would devote their lives to working with poor and suffering people all over the world. where a church called Sacred Heart would take 20 years to build, whose spire was added by a South Bend carpenter as payment for his son's education. This is the place of Reverend Theodore Hesburgh, CSC, whose work for peace, human and civil rights has earned him the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the Congressional Gold Medal, and hundreds of other awards and honorary degrees. 
where Reverend Edward Monk Malloy, CSC, helped deliver the gift of a new ambulance to the people of New York City following the tragedy of 9-11, where the very field of networking was developed, where countless discoveries, inventions, and innovations, such as the idea for a non-invasive hip transplant, have come from. It is the place where you'll find the oldest marching band in the country, more consensus national football championships than any other school in the nation. And the original Notre Dame Stadium, the house that Rockne built, still standing, because it's carefully preserved within the walls of a modern stadium, one of the most remarkable stadium expansions in architectural history. It is a place where these young women, and many more like them, have become national champions where today students come from every walk of life, every corner of the globe, to a university that helps meet the full financial need of every student who might need help with tuition. A place where the Congregation of Holy Cross has shaped a tiny little school in the middle of nowhere into one of the most prestigious institutions of higher education in the entire world. This is Notre Dame du Lac today where you'll find an extraordinary center for the performing arts, a place for teaching, creating, and bringing some of the greatest artists of our age to Notre Dame. Where scholarly work, whether it be science, business, law, engineering, or the humanities, is enhanced by the Catholic nature of this place. It's a great honor to be named the 17th president of the University of Notre Dame. And Reverend John I. Jenkins, CSC, President of the University of Notre Dame, where we are ever mindful of the Lady on the Dome, who guides and watches over this place from her perch high above. Today, as always, the spirit of Notre Dame remains hard to define, but you can hear it in the echoes. You can feel it in your heart. and see it in the men and the women who call this place home. You, Welcome to Our Lady of the Lake. Welcome to the University of Notre Dame du Lac. Welcome to the University of Notre Dame. Since its founding, Notre Dame has thrived on challenge. Never again say that we dream too small. If we are clear in our purpose, we will excel in our ideals. <laughs> 